Okay, so now we focus, we zoom in into the Paris mesophyll and then we take out this chloroplast. Okay, so from chloroplast, we know that they are, okay, where we can find them, we can find them in the photosynthetic leaf, okay, and other photosynthetic organs. You won't go and get the chloroplast in the root hair cell or parent chyma cell, stem, right? the, the, the cell at the stem. Okay, because why? They are not the one that carry out photosynthesis. All right, at the leaf, yes. They sometimes certain plant they use a stem to carry out photosynthesis. Yes, all right, the greenish color. Okay, so in terms of the structure, so they have in, they, they have very extensive membranous system that separates the chloroplast into the three compartments. So these three compartments they are intermembrane space, stroma, and thylakoid space. So we do know that. Uh, The double membrane bound in this case consists of two membranes separates the chloroplast with the, the, the internal environment of chloroplast with the cytoplasm. So inside the chloroplast, we have another membrane system form of very flattened interconnected sacs we call it as the thylakoid. And this thylakoid, we stack them to form a granum. So the fluid outside the thylakoid is we call it as a stroma. So which contains the circular chloroplast DNA, 70S ribosome, very, very similar to the matrix of the mitochondria. Okay, And they do have the enzyme involved in the light-independent reactions. And because of light-independent reactions, then they form starch. So therefore, we do have the starch granule inside the stroma. Okay. So I will skip this part first. What you guys need to do now, activity 9.2, Okay, we take five, uh, two to three minutes time to complete the structure of chloroplast. Okay, recall back. Okay, uh, so we have three, uh, two membranes now. These two membranes form the intermembrane space. Okay, so next you can see that, guys, we have another membrane system here. Okay, form something like a flattened sac, like this, like this. Okay, so these membranes is known as the thylakoid membrane. So the space inside the thylakoid membrane is termed as the thylakoid space. Okay? And then this thylakoid, okay, the, these thylakoid membranes, they are stacked together to form one granum. Okay, to form one granum. And these granums, okay, or grana, are surrounded by the fluid structure here. So this fluid structure is termed as stroma. Are you clear? Okay. But one thing I want you guys to be careful when you write, because when you label, you know that this structure is termed as the chloroplast. So you will put the word stroma is good enough because it won't be wrong because it's a chloroplast. But if the question asks you, state precisely a particular reaction take place. And the answer is stroma. Okay? But you have to write stroma of the chloroplast. Okay, like metric, you cannot say a metric, you have to say matrix of the mitochondria because matrix basically is a put, uh, what you call it? It's a, it's a semi fluid structure. Are you clear? Okay, stroma also is semi fluid structure. It's not only can be found in the mitochondria or chloroplast only, like a bone, your bone, you have the bone stroma, you have the bone matrix as well. Are you clear? So it's a metric, which part? Too many. It's not specific enough. Okay, because question asks for precise, state precisely. Okay, so what we're going to do next, we're going to look at a uh, uh, simplified version of the photosynthesis, not the pathway. And we're going to look at, at which part of the chloroplast that particular reaction actually takes place. We're going to bridge you guys for the next lessons, not next, I mean the, uh, the next two lessons where we're going to look at the pathway. All right, today I'm not going to talk about pathway, but I'm going to talk about where this process actually takes place. Okay. Okay, so let us start you know, a simple drawing okay, of the photosynthesis. So if you look at the photosynthesis in general, photosynthesis can be divided into two major pathways. Okay, two major pathways. One is called as the light dependent reactions. 
Another one is termed as light independent reactions. Okay. So light independent reaction have another name called Kelvin cycle. Let's see capital letter. Also known as Kelvin cycle. Are you clear? So what is the main event? Main event that takes place for light dependent reactions, basically absorption. Light intensity or absorption of the light energy. Absorption of light. Wait, what happened to me? Absorptions of light energy. It's the main role for the light dependent reaction. Are you clear? Okay. How about light independent reactions? Light independent reaction actually is to produce. Okay, the process is the productions of assimilate. Okay, productions of uh, organic carbon compound. So understand the role. Are you clear? Okay. So absorption of light energy in this case, we will convert this absorption of the light energy into two major compounds that we need for the light independent reaction, which are ATP and reduce. NADP. Are you clear? So these two compound ATP and reduce NADP, they are needed by the light independent reactions. These two compound. Clear? Okay. Huh? So where are these actually take place? Where this take place? So we have to look at this ATP. Okay. So the formation of ATP, we have two pathways that can help us to produce or help the chloroplast to produce ATP. One is called cyclic photophosphorylation. Okay. Another one is a non cyclic photophosphorylation. Are you clear? One is cyclic, one is non-cyclic. So the cyclic, the word cyclic or non-cyclic actually refer to the electron. So it means that the movement of the electrons during cyclic photophosphorylation from the word cyclic means we recycle the electron. I am the one that donated electrons. I gain back the electrons. So there's no loss of the electron. Are you clear? There's no loss of electron. But if you look at a non-cyclic, non-cyclic, I am not the one, I am the one that donates. Someone else will be the one that receives. So I am the one that loses the electrons. I need to get the replacement. So this replacement electrons actually take place for the non-cyclic photophosphorylations. So how do this replacement actually take place? So it means that someone's because the electrons here, this one we can recycle. The electrons, so there's no loss of the electrons, but for non cyclic, no recycling of the electrons. So it means the electron continue to lose, right? That means continue to, 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 to means, uh, receive by something. Are you clear? Okay, in the system. So it means that to replace, to replace the electron loss, so one of the events actually take place known as photo. Lysis of H2O. So photolysis of H2O actually release the electron. So this electron actually can replace the loss of the electrons during this non-cyclic photophosphorylation. Are you clear? So basically, how many events actually take place here? Three reaction: light dependent, light independent, and also photolysis. So where did it take place? Where? So let us actually draw the structure. 
for it. I, I mean, to allow you guys to take a photo right now. So double membrane bound organelle. Then you have the thylakoids. A step into the grana or granum and then interconnected. Okay, interconnected. Clear? So, first thing at the surface, okay, and now I'm pointing towards the thylakoid membrane. So, what we can find, what we can find at the thylakoid membrane, what we can get at the thylakoid membrane. So, first, we have the photosynthetic pigment. So this pigment absorb light in the energy. So it means that they involve in the first process known as light dependent reactions. Okay. So in this process, what they produce? They produce ATP and reduce NADP. Can I see that? Okay. So at the space inside here, it's termed as the thylakoid space. Okay, thylakoid space. Clear? So what is the reaction? Telecoid space actually consists eh, or contains the fluids with the enzyme. This enzyme involved in what process? In the, in the photolysis of water molecule. Okay, so the reactions involved here is the photolysis. And the photolysis here actually release, okay, because of photolysis, O2 is released. Okay. So product, can you see that the product? Okay. Uh. Now next. The last one we're going to look at it here is called stroma. So what we can find inside the stroma. So we have circular DNA. We have 70S ribosome and also the enzyme. So what is the function of this enzyme? This enzyme involved in the Kelvin cycle. Involved in the, sorry, okay. Light independent reactions. Okay, involve this light independent reactions. So what is the product produced here? Organic carbon compound. Like for example, we learn about this sugar, amino acids, sucrose. Are you clear? Those acid millet. Okay. So two sections here. So first sections, you can take a photo. Photosynthesis or screenshot. So this compartmentalization actually enable eh, the chloroplast to convert the light energy to chemical energy during photosynthesis. As I say, that involves three parts: thylakoid membrane, thylakoid space, and stroma. Thylakoid membrane actually during a light dependent state, so absorb the light in energy using these photosynthetic pigments. Okay. And because of the loss of the electrons, okay, so therefore photolysis actually takes place to split the water molecule, okay, inside the thylakoid space and stroma. They do have the circular DNA, 70S ribosome, not ribosome only, but you had to mention 70S ribosome, and together with the enzyme. So involved in this light independent stage. Now, I do not know whether you have learned previously, I think in SPM, 
You guys learn it as a dark reactions. I don't know whether you have heard this word before, the dark reactions, correct or not? Now, dark reaction is not a correct term to be used because it gives us the confusions that this reaction has to take place in a dark room or in dark, which is not correct because even though we see the light independent stage, light independent stage basically means that we are independent of the light. So whether light is there or not, they are not, eh? they won't use the light in these reactions. Are you clear? But in fact, light independent stage have to have take place when there is a light intensity. Why? Because they need the ATP and reduce NADP from who? From the light dependent stage. If we don't have light dependent stage, we don't have ATP and reduce NADP. So light independent stage won't be able to take place. So at night, actually, light independent stage won't take place. Are you clear? Okay. So light dependent means that directly depend on light because they absorb the light intensity. But light independent stage in this case means that they are not directly dependent on the light, but it depends on the products from the light dependent stage. Okay. So you look at, you view it under the TEM, transmission electron microscope. This is the typical structure of a chloroplast. You can see that they are interconnected granule and also the stroma. Okay. So with this, I've done for the chloroplast. Okay. So stop recording.